Nowadays, everyone is just talking about Devin, which is a groundbreaking AI software engineer capable of coding, debugging, and even developing apps and websites. But here's the catch. Devin is super exclusive and expensive and they've also kept it pretty locked down and unavailable to the regular folks like you and me, which is totally a bummer because just describing your vision in plain English language and have an AI engineer getting everything coded up for you is such a game changer in our field. Well, there is a good news for all of you. Introducing Codel. Codel is a fully autonomous AI agent that can perform complicated tasks as well as building projects using terminal, browser, and the editor. Here in the example, you can see that it is creating a tic-tac-toe application in Python using the Codel. So for running the prompt, it is first creating a new directory for the tic-tac-toe project. Then it starts moving into it. It creates different chunks of script in order to complete the code and then afterwards you can see that we have the entire code and I've copied the code and run it in the VS code and you can see that it ran without any errors and the game is absolutely functional. In this video I'm going to show you how you can actually install it and how you can get started with using it and I'm going to run certain examples on it to show you how it performs. But before that, let's quickly go through some of the cool features that it provides. So the first and the most important feature is that it is fully secure because everything is running in a sandbox Docker environment. Next feature is that it is autonomous, which means that it automatically detects the next step and performs it on its own. Moreover, it has a built-in browser which fetches the latest information from the web if it is needed. It also has a built-in text editor in which you can view all the modified files right inside your browser. It also saves the history commands and saves the outputs inside a PostgreSQL database. And the most important feature is that it is an automatic Docker image picker based on the user task. So whichever task you will provide to it, it will automatically select the Docker image based on the task which you have provided. All right, let's quickly go ahead and see how you can install Codel on your local system. And for that, I'm going to move to the GitHub repo and inside the GitHub repo, I have moved inside the development of MD file. So in order to install Codel on your local system, there are certain prerequisites. Make sure that you have Golang Node.js, Docker, and PostgreSQL installed on your system. Docker is the most important thing for this installation because they have packed all the components of Codel inside a Docker image and we simply have to pull that image using the Docker. And once you do all of that, you also need to make sure that you have an OpenAI API key and if you don't already have it, you can always go to the OpenAI website, log into your account and generate a new key from there. And if you don't have Docker already installed, then you can always go to this link that says docs.docker.com slash engine slash installed. And here you have multiple options to install Docker engine. And you can select the required option according to your operating system. So since I'm working on Linux, I have downloaded the Docker desktop for Linux. And once you have Docker installed and configured, now you are all set to move forward for the installation. So if you scroll down on this GitHub repo, you will see everything related to Codel and for the installation, you can see that it says you can run the Docker image with the following command, remove or change the environment variables according to your needs. So this is the command using which we will pull or run the Docker image having the Codel. So I'm going to copy this from right here. I'm going to open a new terminal window and inside this terminal, you have to paste the command which you have just copied. But before running the command, you have to change a few things. Here you can see after the Docker run, it is asking you to enter the OpenAI API key for the environment variable. So go ahead and move to the point where you have to add the OpenAI API key and then add the API key which you have just generated. Once this is done, simply hit enter and you will see it was unable to find the image locally. So now it is pulling the image from the link which we have provided to it. And once you get this message that says connect to HTTP localhost 8080, you have to go to your browser and in the URL, you have to type localhost colon 3000. Hit enter and then you will see the front end of the codal will appear right in front of you. And this interface is very much like the interface of Devin and Devika. Here you have the option to initialize a new task. You have the terminal, the browser, and the code section, which is soon to come. So now let's quickly go ahead and create a new task. 
and if you want to select the model you have two options either you can go with the gpt4 or the llama 2 i'm going to go with the gpt4 version and now it says to type a new message to start the flow so in order to test it firstly i'm going to provide it a simple prompt that says write code in python to check whether a number is even or odd hit enter and you will see that it will start it initializing the docker image python which is the latest version and as i've already mentioned that it automatically picks the docker image according to the provided task all right so in just a matter of few seconds you can see that it performed all these steps and has provided us the code right here in front of you and it has also provided us an example usage that it will ask you to enter a number then you will have an if statement to check if the number is even and if it is not correct then the else statement will be printed which means that the number is odd and it has created a new file called even or checker.py and has wrote the code inside it. So in order to run it, you have to run the command python even or checker slash even or checker.py. And once you are happy with the code, you can simply finish the task to mark it finished. And then if you want to generate a new task, click on new task right here. And this time I'm going to provide it a more complex prompt. I'm going to ask it to create a Python code for the tic-tac-toe game and let's see if it is able to generate the code for it or not. Okay, so you can see that it is initialized the Docker image Python according to our task. It is started generating the code and step by step it is adding different lines of code inside the main function and you can see that the code is increasing by every passing second. And then after writing all of the code, it is saying that now let's run the tic-tac-toe game to see it in action. And it has run this command in order to execute the file. So let's wait for it to do that. Okay, so it is taking a lot of time, but still it hasn't run the project. So I've copied the code, which is the final version of the code. I've opened my VS code and I pasted all of this code right here inside the editor. Now I'm simply go ahead and run this file in order to test the code. Okay, so you can see that there was no error in the code and it ran successfully. So it says welcome to tic tac 2 and for the player X you have to enter your move number. So if I enter 1 here, then for the player O press 9, then for the player X I'm going to enter 7, then for the player O I'm going to enter 3 and then for the player X I'm going to enter 4 and you see that the player X has entered 4 and the X wins and the game is over. So this means that the entire game along with all of its feature is working absolutely correctly. So you can see that in just a matter of few seconds, Codal generated the code for the entire Tic-Tac-Toe game and that too without any errors, which is really cool. So once you are happy with the code, simply click on the finish button to finish the task. Now I'm going to create a new task and this time I'm going to test its knowledge of math so I'm going to ask it what is the factorial of 5 and let's see if it is able to answer this question or not okay so it has provided me the function to calculate the factorial then it has run the python script to calculate the factorial of 5 and it has shown me the answer to be 120 so it says the factorial of 5 has been successfully calculated using the python script and the result is 120 Okay, so in addition to simply providing the correct answer, it also provided us the code in order to reach to this answer. Now, let's ask it another question. I'm going to say a person crosses a 600 meter long street in 5 minutes. What is his speed in kilometer per hour? And let's see how it responds to this prompt. Okay, so it is creating a new directory because it is going to calculate it using the code. Alright, so it has provided us the answer that the speed is 7.2 kilometers per hour which is absolutely correct and in addition to providing the answer it has also provided us the steps which were performed in order to reach the answer so here you can see that it says the distance is 600 time in minutes is 5 firstly it has converted the distance into kilometers by dividing it by 1000 it has converted the time into hours by dividing it by 60 and then it has calculated the speed using the formula distance over time and reached the answer which is 7.2 kilometers per hour and all of this was done in just a matter of 2 or 3 seconds. To be very honest, I was not expecting it to solve this question this quickly but it did so, so kudos to that. Now, let's test it out its math knowledge once again. I am gonna say 
वट इज टू प्लस थ्री प्लस एट डिवाइडेड बाई फोर माइनस फाइव इन टू फोर माइनस थ्री इक्वल टू एंड लेट सी इफ इट इज एबल टू कैलकुलेट द आंसर ऑफ दिस इक्वेजन और नॉट सो इट इज क्रिएटेड अ न्यू डायरेक्टरी नाउ इट इज रनिंग द पाइथन स्क्रिप्ट एंड इट हैज प्रोवाइडेड अस द आंसर टू बी टू विच इज एब्सोलूटली करेक्ट and if you want to verify the answer you can copy the equation paste it on google and you can see that it is also provided as the answer to be 2 so you can see that in addition to providing a simple code it is also able to solve mathematical calculations as well now i am going to provide it a prompt to create a complete application for that i am going to prompt it to create the python code to perform data analysis using pandas library and let's see if it can find the pandas library and create code that uses it and performs data analysis okay so in a matter of few seconds it has provided started providing me the code firstly it is importing the pandas it has created a sample data for the analysis it is creating a data frame using pandas then it is also running all the libraries wow i was not expecting this okay so now it is saying that there was an error getting the next task what should i do Let's ask it to continue. Okay, so it has started doing that, and maybe there is some issue in downloading the libraries. It is saying to use the virtual environment instead. So I'm gonna say it use a virtual environment. Let's see how it performs. Okay, so it is working, and it has started downloading the libraries further, and once again it went into an error. Okay, so it was providing me the code, and it started. downloading the required libraries but because of some reason it ran into an error and it was not able to resolve it but it's fine it has already passed all the other tests for us let's try it out again but with another prompt for that i'm going to create a new task and i'm going to say create a chatbot streamlit app using openai hit enter and wait for it to generate the response okay so it has initialized the container it has created the library it is installing the streamlit and open ai which are the app requirements for the application all right so after adding the required libraries it has started generating the code so you can see that firstly it is setting the open ai api key then it is generating a function it gen get response that takes a query as an input after that it is initializing the model which is the text davinci 003 it is setting all the parameters for it and then it is passing the query to this function as a prompt and then the response generated by it is being returned and then there is a text box for the user input if it is not empty then it will call the function get response response will be saved inside this variable called response and it is simply printing the response so that's a really cool thing that you can see in just a matter of almost 5 seconds or even less than that it was able to download all the required dependencies along with creating the code for the application so i think that codel is much better than the other alternatives of devon like devika because it didn't hang for even a single second its code generation time was much faster as compared to devika it was much simple to install there was just a single step in order to install it and the installation was quite simple and error free and the quality of code was absolutely phenomenal and error free as i displayed to you and in addition to just providing the code it also answered different questions like questions related to different mathematical problems so i think that up till now codel is the best alternative to the devin as it is completely open source it is free it is easy to install and has much better quality so i highly encourage all of you to try it out for yourselves and see what an amazing tool it is and the best part is they are constantly working on improving codel and adding new features to it so try it out for yourself and let me know in the comments what you think about it that's all for this video thanks for watching